night he has been handled to Think of humble shepherds who Filled with wonder at the sight Of the child of Christmas night Candle, candle burning bright Shining in the cold winter night Candle, candle burning bright Fill our hearts with Christmas light Light the advent candle three Think of heavenly harmonies Angels singing peace on earth At the blessed Savior's birth Candle, candle burning bright Shining in the cold winter night Candle, candle burning bright Fill our hearts Good morning, beloved, and welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church in Concord, New Hampshire. Let us begin this morning by lighting the candle of hope and of love. And this week, the third week of Advent, the candle of joy. It is the third week of Advent. Today is Sunday, December 13th, 2020, and I'm Reverend Cheryl Meachin. It's so good to have all of you with us here this morning, whether you're here for the first time or whether you're a longtime member. We encourage you to visit our website at conquerwumc.org to learn more about us, to learn how we grow with God so that we can go to serve and to join us in, in spiritual formation and in mission and ministry throughout the community of Concord and beyond. We'd love for you to indicate that you've joined us this morning by signing up on our welcome clipboard that you can find at the link in the Google chat below. And we'd love for you to share this season with us by sending in a photo of the luminary that you've been sent in your window or uh, photos of Christmas decorations that are especially meaning to you, perhaps a creche or manger, or perhaps an angel or star decoration, so that we can share them during this service with all of our members and friends here. I'd like to turn it over now to our lay leader, Jane Broderick, who will give us an announcement and then we'll begin our time of worship together. Good morning. This Advent, let's send a little hope and love to the students at Second Starts Alternative High School. Our donations to their Christmas gift this year will be used to help provide a day trip to Adventure Lore in Danville, New Hampshire, a day of adventure, challenge, community building, and fun. Send checks payable to Wesley UMC with Alternative High School on the memo line to Wesley at 79 Clinton Street, Concord, New Hampshire or donate online at conqueredwumc.org slash donate. And be sure to note there that your gift is for the Alternative High School. The students and staff of the high school are so very grateful for Wesley's support.
our theme this morning continues that poem found on the cellar wall during the Holocaust with that poem, I Believe. Our theme is I Believe in God, Ode to Joy. And the film that we're examining this week is called Following the Ninth. This week we turn to Luke's writing, which is an account in two acts, the gospel biography of Jesus and then the story of the early church, the Jesus community. Whether you were a Jew or a Gentile in those days, Deciding to become a part of this illegal early Christian movement could bring punishment for your allegiance. Surely the message in both Luke and Isaiah that the downcast, lowly, and oppressed would rise up is a welcome and inspirational account. Like the Jewish exiled people of Isaiah's time, and like the early Christians, we also sometimes wonder where God is in our suffering. We long to hear the promise that a reason for joyful praise is the good news on the way. I believe in God. I believe in God. Even when, even when God is not. the loneliness of fear, the invisibility of the next step, the yearning for presence. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of the depths of joy, of challenge, of struggle. Even when we are not sure of your presence, ignite the flame of joy within us that we might glow with its brilliance from the inside out. us face the silence of unknowing and embrace it as the pregnant pause before joyful new beginnings.
Leslie families, how are you today? <laughs> I hope you are well. You're with me in my kitchen again today, and I'm just looking to build a little ice cream sundae. I've got a little marshmallow fluff here that I am going to spoon a little bit down on the bottom of a bowl. It's nice and sticky, so it'll take a minute. <laughs> Hmm, I wonder why I might be building an ice cream sundae. Do you guys like ice cream sundaes? I think they are fabulous. And they're so simple to make, but they're so fun to make, aren't they? They're such a simple joy in building an ice cream sundae. We're in the third Sunday of Advent. And we are talking about joy this week. I don't know about you, but ice cream certainly brings joy to my life. <laughs> and building an ice cream sundae builds joy. You might nor not normally see fluff on the bottom of a sundae, but I've got the base of some fluff. And then I've got some good old vanilla ice cream. And I'm going to be sure to scoop a nice circle of it and plop it right on top. I'm gonna use my fingers. I plan on eating it after, so it's okay. <laughs> so then we do our ice cream. Now, as we build this, do you guys know maybe a snowman who expressed some joy? Today, or this week I should say, we got to talk about Frosty the snowman, right? I'm putting on my little pieces of coal, which are chocolate chips. I'll hold it up in a minute so that you guys can really see. So Frosty the snowman certainly expressed a lot of joy in his movie and in his time, right? He even starts off when he's made and comes to life, how he came to life one day by saying happy birthday, right? It's the simple things, him just being alive. Simple things like the children building a snowman. Simple things like an ice cream sundae that can just bring us joy in having some ice cream. Now, you know some other things that can bring some joy? Well, Beside Reese's Pieces, which are next. <laughs> Other things that can bring joy are helping others. Think of all the times that you have helped someone and it just feels so good to help them, right? All right, I'm just gonna plop this down. And look at this. I have a melty snowman sundae. <laughs> I hope you can see that well. He's a little bit of a melty snowman. And you know what? Even in the movie, Frosty the Snowman, even when he had those moments where he was a little warm because he was helping little Sally, um, he was still the most joyful, jolly guy ever. And he taught a simple joy by simply being alive. And there were a whole bunch of helping moments. I was saying that, you know, when we help someone, that's the best way to feel pure joy. Now, certain points in the movie um, where, you know, people came to help, we had the moment where um, Hocus Pocus, you know, brought the magic hat back for the kids, right? That made him really happy. And then the children helped Frosty get on the train so he can get frozen again, right? Because he got warm. He got warm, so the children helped him, and that made them feel so good to get back up to the North Pole, right? And then Frosty and Hocus Pocus, um, took care of Karen while um, she was shivering in the refrigerator truck, in the refrigerator box car of the train, right? And then all of those woodland animals, they built the fire for Karen to stay warm, and Frosty was helping her all along the way even though he melted a little bit. I'll channel Olaf. Some people are worth melting for, right? That's kind of where we're at. Channel Olaf too. Snowmen know all of the joy in the world. <laughs> um, 
And then the last one that we really can think about is when Santa makes sure that um, that Frosty stays alive by um, not allowing Professor Hinkle to bully Karen and Frosty. He he tells him to go away, right? Um, so this movie shows us the pure joy in the simple things in life, in helping somebody, in being alive, right? And having an ice cream sundae. <laughs> and this relates to the joy we feel of Jesus' birth and, and the rebirth that we can all feel, right? Um, one of our Bible verses today comes from Job and says, so this can be like when Frosty comes alive, the Spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. These children gave him life, and the breath of the Almighty gave Jesus life, right? And then we experience the joy of Mary at this time of year, where she says in Luke, With all my heart I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. Okay? I love joy. <laughs> joy in ice cream, joy in snowmen, joy in this time of year, joy in the <clears throat> things that are to come, right? I want you to find the joy. Maybe build this ice cream sundae yourself. Go help someone who needs help. Help around the house. Find that everlasting joy, all right? Let us bring our hands together and pray. All right, I'll move my ice cream out of the way. <laughs> All right, dear God, thank you for the gift of joy, for the joy of simplicity, for the joy of working together, for the joy of helping others, for the joy of being alive and getting to say happy birthday. And all God's children say, Amen. All right. So, you'll remember we have been working on celebrating the 100th anniversary of this little light of mine. So far, we've done two verses. Do you remember them? That's okay. We'll go over them real quick. And today, we're going to learn the third about hiding it under a bushel. No. Okay. So, let's go back to the beginning with this little eye of mine, right? Let's start from the beginning. We start with this little, ready? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Then our second verse was, won't let Satan blow it out. Ready? Won't let Satan blow it out. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Our last one for today, hide it under a bushel. So we're gonna go hide it under a bushel so we turn it into a flower hide it under a bushel no that's the sign language for no no i'm gonna let it shine okay let's try that first ready hide it hide it under a bushel no i'm gonna let it shine Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, 
Let it shine, let it shine. All right. I hope you enjoy your Melty Snowman Sunday. Happy Sunday, everybody. Experience the joy this week. See you later. Bye. Scripture readings today are taken from the books of Isaiah and Luke. Isaiah chapter 57 verses 14 through 19. It shall be said, build up, build up, prepare the way, remove every obstruction from my people's way. For thus the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with those who are contrite and humble in spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite. For I will not continually accuse, nor will I be angry. For then the spirits would grow faint before me, even the souls that I have made. Because of their wicked covetousness, I was angry. I struck them, I hid and was angry but they kept turning back to their own ways. I have seen their ways, but I will heal them. I will lead them and repay them with comfort, creating for their mourners the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to the far and near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. This reading is from the Gospel according to Luke, dedication to Theophilus. Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too decided, after investigating everything carefully from the first, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. This reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4 and 26 through 56, the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, in his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said of the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Mary visits Elizabeth. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. 
Mary's Song of Praise. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home. This is the story of faith and faithful struggle. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. O oh, Holy One, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. And may we, like Samuel, cry out and say, Speak, Lord, for we are listening. Amen. The Forston and McFall family have just read from Isaiah and from Luke. The reading from Luke is late in the book, and he has moved to words about rebuilding. Certainly the work to remove barriers from my people's road is a long haul in terms of reconstructing the entrenched roads of injustice that we have created in our society. We must continue to build up, build up, we must continue to tend the hearts that are crushed. Joy comes in our work to break down barriers, and you'll hear more about this in our documentary film trailer this week. The film is called Following the Ninth. You'll hear a little bit about it in terms of the Berlin Wall. Strength comes in trust that God is working alongside us inviting us to keep checking in about our own penchant to steer the road off course again and again. You may be in the mood to rejoice about progress related to the Black Lives Matter movement or related to the pandemic now that we've heard that there's a vaccine in process. Or you may feel discouraged about the post Thanksgiving spike that we're all feeling. But like the community to whom Isaiah wrote, we are still in need of words of comfort. Comfort ye my people, Isaiah says. And like those in exile, we need to look ahead and trust that there will be reasons to praise. God says, for those who mourn, I will create a reason for praise. I will heal them. We turn then to Luke's original story this week. Luke is a journalist, and this longest book of the four Gospels details the events of Jesus' birth as an important way of understanding who Jesus is. It is also a way to help non-Jews get the facts, not just the rumors, so they can see Jesus saving presence for them as well as us. To these fledgling new Christians, Mary's Magnificat would have read like a rallying protest speech calling for justice and putting powerful words in the mouth of a self-proclaimed servant. 
Some in those early communities would have heard their own occupation reflected in that word. Joy, deep human thriving, can happen in the midst of oppression when people are inspired to raise their voice, to raise up to their full height and proclaim their worth. This week's documentary film is called Following the Ninth. And one of the reasons why this documentary film so powerfully connects to this theme of joy is just that, that peace that is deep within us. The film is about Beethoven's Ninth Symphony with its section commonly known as the Ode to Joy. This piece of music is deeply intertwined with movements for justice and freedom such as Tiananmen Square, East Berlin and Chile, and also moments of human tragedy such as Japan's tsunami. You will never sing this tune the same way again after watching this film. Here's a description from the film's website. Following the Ninth is a documentary film about the global impact of Beethoven's final symphony. The film, released in the mid-2013, has screened in over 250 cities in the United States and around the globe, with more to come. Written in 1824 near the end of Beethoven's life, the Ninth Symphony was composed by a man with little to be thankful for, sick, alienated from almost everyone, and completely deaf. Beethoven had never managed to find love, nor create the family he'd always wanted. And yet, despite this, he managed to create an anthem of joy that embraces the transcendence of beauty over suffering celebrated to this day for its ability to heal, repair, and bring people together across great divides, the Ninth has become an anthem of liberation and hope that has inspired many around the world. At Tiananmen Square in 1989, students played the Ninth over loudspeakers as the army came in to crush their struggle for freedom. In Chile, women living under the Pinochet dictatorship sang the Ninth at torture prisons, where men inside took hope when they heard their voices. As the Berlin Wall came down in December 1989, it collapsed to the sound of Leonard Bernstein conducting Beethoven's Ninth as an ode to freedom. In Japan, each December, the Ninth is performed hundreds of times, with 10,000 people in the chorus. Following the Ninth gives us insight into the heightened importance of this massive communal Ninth, known as Daiku in the aftermath of the earthquake and tsunami of 2011. Let's watch this trailer and see a little of what it's about. The whole thing is a kind of creation story or an evolution story. I mean, the first, the first, the first thing is not a thing. It's a nothing. What on earth is that? And then when it, when it starts to move, the spirit of God hovering over the waters, what you get is... And then you have this cataclysmic event. It's pure violence. That is primordial violence. That is the Big Bang. This peace enters your bloodstream and then changes who you are. The entire blueprint of everything, all the way from subatomic particles to galactic clusters, it's all here.
we demanded the government to hold a direct dialogue with us students to uh, push the uh, political reform. The government refused. I set up the first broadcast station. I put the cassette of Beethoven live to cover the voice of the government system. There was a real transformation. It gave us a sense of hope, uh, solidarity. All people become brothers. We just feel that oh, we were free at last. We regain our dignity as a human being. For me, that, uh, that was a movement for hope. And the tanks and the machine guns killed that hope. If given a chance to meet one person in history, for me it would be better. And the question I would ask him, if I only had one question, would be the Ninth Circuit. The Ninth seems to express most completely what human beings are struggling for. It's a battle cry for humanity. It is the hymn of possibility. Seventy-three began a very dark time. Pinochet took the power and he made one of the worst military coups. This dream from, from equality was gone. Music was banished, and happiness was banished. I was in a room with a window, with the uh, uh, iron grid. And one day, I heard the music, only the music. was like a shield against the fear, against the pain, against the darkness. When you are in the deepest, darkest hole, the music was hope. sure I'm a musician, I'm a guitar player, but there's no reason why that should stop me from, uh, from writing the lyrics of Ode to Joy from Beethoven's Night Symphony. You don't have to wait till the London Symphony Orchestra gives you permission or asks you. The fact that I've written the two verses is all the validation I need, there they are. And if I can make those two verses singable by the kids, Sit. Then great, I'll do that as well. OK, Man of Destiny, here we go. <sighs> Music is something that is mood-enhancing and mind-bending. You can change or enhance that melancholy feeling or that joyous feeling you have. And Beethoven obviously felt that deeply. You can imagine if he, you know, heard his favourite song while he was in the supermarket, it would stop him dead and mess up his day, you know.
just need this Beethoven's message. In that clip, you saw Billy Bragg, a British punk rocker who sees himself as a common man, a self-trained musician. And he wrote words to the tune Ode to Joy, which you'll hear later. They are in some ways a Magnificat for our day. What would your song of joy, your Magnificat, sound like? What would you give thanks for? How does your soul magnify the Lord even in the midst of sadness and suffering? The Magnificat, Mary's Song of Joy, is the singular most amazing articulation of joy in the midst of suffering ever spoken. Mary's soul rejoices in the Lord, even when she finds herself in a dangerous human condition, unmarried and pregnant. Instead of lamenting her condition, bereft of hope, she hears the angel. She listens to the message that she is God's chosen God-bearer to the hurting world. And her soul rejoices. Each of us is such a vessel, filled to the brim with God's love, able to bear that joy into the world. Rather than lamenting our coven-laden condition, we can recognize that this time is pregnant with possibilities and we can use this time of waiting to prepare for the time to come. We can imagine what God has in store for us and how we can share God's love with those most in need throughout Concord and beyond, rejoicing. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Amen. Join me in a litany of belief. In times when humanity disappoints, perhaps even when our own thoughts and behaviors disappoint, is it an important act to call out, name, and claim the consequences of our wrongs. And in times of distress, is a prophetic act to call out, name, and claim our belief in the promise of joy. Here are these statements of belief. I believe that we have sometimes been silent in the face of injustice, and... Yeah. I believe, I believe that, that we are capable of raising our voices and insisting on goodness for all. I believe that we have been afraid of feeling deeply, making our joy small, and I believe that the deep joy of community can always be present, even in hard times. I believe that sometimes we wonder if we can make a difference, and I believe that small acts of kindness and help do make a real difference. We believe, even when we are discouraged. We believe that when we are discouraged, raising our voices for justice will offer us joy. And now as we come into this time of prayer, I remind you that you can send your prayers of concern and celebration anytime throughout the week to our prayer chain coordinator, Laura Fry, at poptoad at comcast.net. You can also reach us through our church office by email or phone and send things along to our prayer messenger group to pray for as well. We're celebrating the birthdays of Calvin Dowling, Julie Bly, and Holly Newhall this week. Happy birthday, friends! And as always, I encourage you to stay connected with your beloved community. 
to remember to reach out to all of those who might be lonely during this time. Let us pray together now for Jill Savage's family in Indiana, for her 91-year-old dad who resides in assisted living, and for his facility, which is back to no visitation due to another COVID outbreak. Also for her, Jill's cousin, Cheryl Fisher, who was diagnosed recently with COVID and is being treated at home. Let us pray for Judy Daka's ministry in Zambia, where she reports that they have been attacked by malaria. She reports that 15 children have died, as well as one pregnant mother. Judy says this is so scary, and our government clinics have no medication, and nothing is happening to mitigate the situation. Let us pray together for Tiffany Hutchins at the death of her stepmother, Tammy. Let us continue in our prayers for Dick Hart's daughter, Caroline, who is an EMT in Chicago, dealing with COVID every day. Let us pray together for Larry Haynes as he continues chemotherapy for his stage three kidney cancer. Let us pray for all of those who are hungry and lonely during our country's time of, of lockdown and fewer jobs available. Those who need food, let us pray that they might receive it. Let us reach out in love and supply it to them. Let us pray for all who are navigating difficult emotional terrain, for those in helping professions like healthcare workers and teachers carrying enormous workloads during this time when so much help is needed. Let us always pray for our Jericho team as we do the work of breaking down walls and welcoming those who have felt unwelcome in their homes and churches and society. Let us pray for our world as we live into a new paradigm accelerated by COVID sometimes uncomfortable, always unfamiliar. And let us pray for each other. Let us pray for that joy to be in us, which Mary so articulately shared. Let us pray for joy amidst the sorrow and that we might be able to bring joy to those who are suffering. And now let's pray together in the words that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we come into the time of offering, I'm going to remind you that your support for our church helps the community in so many ways. Sometimes we have special drives for the Alternative High School. You've probably received an invitation to contribute to the staff gift or the pastor's discretionary fund. But your pledge, your tithes and your offerings give to our electricity and our salaries things that make the church run and we are so grateful for your continued faithfulness to this important need we encourage you to give by sending your check to 79 clinton street concord new hampshire 03301 or by going through our website www.concordwumc.org slash donate so that you might give and in, in any of those ways, and you can make a note on your check or in the donation page to indicate what it is that you're giving to so that our, our financial folks can differentiate that. We are so grateful for the many ways in which you give.
Let us be in the spirit of prayer. O Holy One, we give our offering joyfully, knowing that you can use these gifts, knowing that these gifts can further your kingdom, knowing that your kingdom will come, your kingdom, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And now I'd like to introduce our final hymn that we're calling A Carol of Resistance. The carols in our series, as you recall, are subversively or overtly commentaries on issues of justice in the times in which they were written. As you will witness in our documentary this week, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, which is the basis of the tune for our hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, has been a powerful witness to the human spirit to overcome adversity in many instances around the globe. British punk rock star Billy Bragg once wrote an alternative translation of the original German choral score for a school teacher to teach the children in her classroom, and it soon became a popular anthem, even being performed for the Queen. In these words, you can hear the call to resist division to raise our voices, to furnish every heart with joy and banish all hatred for good. Let's hear those lyrics now. And remember the tune, Ode to Joy. Da 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 da. See now like a phoenix rising from the rubble of the war, hope of ages manifested, peace and freedom evermore. Brothers, sisters, stand together Raise your voices now as one, though by history divided, reconciled in unison. Throw off now the chains of ancient bitterness and enmity, and in hand let's walk together on the path of liberty. Hark, a new dawn is breaking. Raise your voices now as one, though by history divided, reconciled, in unison. What's to be then, all my brothers, sisters, what is in your hearts? Tell me now the hopes you harbor. What's the task and where to start? Those who speak ten million voices, every word is understood. Furnish every heart with joy and banish all hatred for good. Let us now sing together Joyful, joyful, we adore thee.
You're invited to pick up your candle and hold it high for the benediction. We wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to el work to eliminate hatred. And so my friends, like bells ringing out the news that God is ever present with us, fill the night left by sadness with messages of joy. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep that joy alive in you and that spur you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me, do not be afraid, do not be afraid, amen. I invite you to join the Zoom Fellowship Hour where we spend some time with each other at the link below. And also please join us next week for the fourth Sunday of Advent. Go in peace.